begin this morning with the loss of an American icon, the death of Supreme Court Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg. She passed away at her home in Washington last night from complications related to pancreatic cancer. She was 87 years old. Ginsburg was nominated to the court by President Clinton. She was known as a fighter, having experienced discrimination on different levels over the years. Ginsburg dedicated much of her career to advancing women's rights, having argued several landmark gender discrimination cases. She served for 27 years and was just the second woman appointed to the Supreme Court after Sandra Day O'Connor. Here's Chief Legal Correspondent Jan Crawford. Mr. President, I am grateful beyond measure. Ruth Bader Ginsburg's 1993 nomination to the Supreme Court hardly seemed possible 34 years earlier when she graduated from Columbia Law School at the top of her class. There was not a single firm in the entire city of New York that would offer me a job. She said she had three strikes against her. She was Jewish, a woman, and the ultimate deal breaker, a mother. And legal employers feared that I would be staying home more than I would be showing up for work. But it was that kind of unequal treatment that drove her to become a law professor and eventually head the Women's Rights Project at the ACLU, where she argued six landmark cases before the Supreme Court, winning five in the fight to end gender discrimination. She is to the women's movement what former Supreme Court Justice Thurgood Marshall was to the movement for the rights of African Americans. I, Ruth Bader Ginsburg. On the highest court, Justice Ginsburg's conservative colleagues took issue with her more modern interpretation of the Constitution. She explained her perspective to Mike Wallace. The genius of our Constitution is that over now more than 200, sometimes turbulent years, yeah. that we has expanded. Serving almost three decades on the court, she was diagnosed with cancer multiple times. And when her husband of 56 years died in 2010, Justice Ginsburg was back on the bench the next day. She credited their long and happy marriage to a piece of advice from her mother-in-law. She said, dear, in every good marriage, it helps sometimes to be a little deaf. And I have followed that advice, not only in dealing with my dear spouse, but in dealing with my colleagues. The soft-spoken justice was good friends with her often bombastic conservative colleague, Antonin Scalia. During an interview conducted with his widow more than a year after Scalia's death in 2016, Ginsburg longed for a time when friendships like theirs were commonplace. That kind of collegiality, good relations, people who liked and respected each other, even though they disagreed on some important questions. My hope is that in my lifetime, we will get back to the way it once was. Jan Crawford, CBS News.